Labor Day weekend is typically the final chance for a summer getaway, and while it's getting more and more expensive to travel, there's a growing trend to use smaller, old-fashioned trailers or RVs that let you bypass hotels and planes without burning through too much fuel. Joining us now is Douglas Keister, author of Teardrops and Tiny Trailers, and he is in the KTVU parking lot this morning. He's going to show us a few examples. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Hi, Tori. Good morning. You know, one of the things I found most interesting in your book, you said people who use small trailers tend to be the friendliest people on Earth. Can you explain? Well, they're real friendly because they can't stay in their trailers. They got to get out of their trailers and be real social, as opposed to the people with great big old RVs kind of hide in there. The little trailer people, they got to go out and socialize. And, and I guess also, if, you know, it's not a problem if you meet your neighbors, you don't like them, you could just pick up and leave and go somewhere That's else. That's right. That's right. You don't like your neighbors, you can just hitch up and go. <laughs> What, tell, tell us a little bit about the history of, of these uh, type of trailers. That when were they first created and, and, and who tends to use them? Well, the, the little tiny trailers first came out of the 1930s, uh, the little teardrops, uh, early 30s, first manufactured in the late 30s. And the people that tend to use them are really kind of the resurrection of the old trailers started with the old car people who wanted something that was sympathetic to their car. So a little tiny trailer and a car made a really great combination. Let's take a look at the first one. This is uh, the, the teardrop style that, that you mentioned. It's, it's a beautiful design in many ways. This is a 1937 Gypsy Caravan owned by uh, Ann and Norm Marcus. Uh, they're the third owners from Crockett, California. Um, this is the first known example of um, a teardrop, manufactured teardrop. The teardrop people make all sorts of interesting things. Wow. Just so everything works just fine. I uh, take, have that come out and put your, uh, <laughs> put your flowers out right there and you're all set to go. Right. Uh, another table comes out of here. Here we have the original ice box. Wow. This, this with real ice. This is the original 1937 ice. <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and a tiny little sleeping area there. Right. So. right. Here, this is um, a full-size bed. Uh -huh. uh, the trailer is actually four feet by ten feet. Uh, but it has a full-size bed. Mm -hmm. uh, you have all sorts of cabinetry, things like that. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a little compact, but... Um, but it's functional. It, it's functional. All right, it's now let's functional. go on to, to the next one. This is also a teardrop, a little the, bit bigger, and it's the, fairly high-tech, isn't it? Right, this is a, a new one, a home-built. This is kind of a teardrop on steroids, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a little bit bigger, things fold out. Um, it's got a microwave. Um, once again, you've got all sorts of cabinetry. You got your stove here. Wow. Um, it's really, and you can pull these things with a, a Volkswagen, any kind of small car. Mm -hmm. um, they really work great for that. And you've got um, air conditioning in there, right? This, this one has air conditioning. Cool. It's really got, it's got it all. Um, uh, it's got, you know, an internet connection, yeah. so you can live there and do that. It's all kinds of cabinetry. Lots of storage. Really? All right. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. That, that one's uh, the largest one you have there, and I love the name of the style. It's called a canned ham. Right. This is a canned ham type trailer. Mm -hmm. um, a teardrop trailer is um, shaped like a teardrop. Uh, well, a canned ham trailer is shaped like a can of ham. And this one um, you can actually go into and walk around and it's really got everything in it. It's got um, sleeps four, mm. if uh, very compactly. <laughs> and right. uh, this was built in Sebastopol in the early 1950s. And this is owned by Aidan and Michael Hayward of, um, that live in, um, in around Sebastopol and Sonoma County. And they brought it down today all the way oh. We certainly, the way yeah, we certainly appreciate that. Now, Doug, I, I, Douglas, I just wanted to, to mention, you know, the teardrops, those are so tiny. It, you don't really have much room to change your clothes, but some people have come up with a canopy or something like that to uh, take right. care of that problem. Right. A lot of people have put little uh, canopies on them. I've even found one that mm -hmm. uh, between the tongue and the body of the trailer, they have a bathroom that pops up. Oh. So, um, and I've heard stories of people having to spend, you know, four or five days in these things in a, in a snowstorm. Oh, wow. Very, very cozy days. Yeah. But, uh, 
But um, the, the book that just came out is Teardrops and Tiny Trailers, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's just great. Yeah, uh, well, you, you've certainly done a great job of showing us around this, and I think you've got more information in the book for clubs or people who, who want to um, join this kind of movement, I guess, if you will. Once again, the book is Teardrops and Tiny Trailers. Douglas Keister, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been uh, very interesting getting a tour of those trailers out there. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, time is 8.20. Want to go back to Dave.